Hey guys, can I get a virtual show of hands if you have ever thought to yourself these things? What the heck am I even doing? Why would anyone ever trust me to help them when I am such a hot mess themselves? And am I able to really do this coaching thing? Well, earlier this month, I had one of those weeks where I could not shake those limiting beliefs. I was having back-to-back -back coaching calls with students. I was coaching multiple sessions of our leadership foundation groups, and I was bringing on new one-on-one -on -one clients. All amazing things were happening in my business, but every time I would get off a call, I still felt unsure, exhausted, and doubtful that I was making an impact in anyone's life. What the heck was even happening to me? I knew one thing, and it was that I just could not remain in this place. I had the biggest fear that this imposter syndrome that I was feeling, yes, imposter syndrome is real, look it up, we talk about it all the time here at Emerge, but that this imposter syndrome was going to creep into and impact my coaching calls and my ability to truly help others, that, that people were going to start realizing that I had this self-doubt. So what I did, I'd been there before. Surprise, wasn't the first time I've had these doubts. So I pulled a few tricks out of my hat and I wanted to share those with you today. Just some tools that you might be able to use if you find yourself in this same scenario of self doubt. Um, so the first thing I recommend and the first thing I do is to, to be honest and tell someone else. The most important thing to do, I did, was to reach out and tell my co coach and best friend, Karen and my amazing mentor, Tasha, that I was feeling these crazy feelings, right, after I would get off calls. So Karen's known me for 15 years. She has been my honest sounding board and biggest cheerleader since I've known her. And she has the ability to kind of dig into why, talk to me a little bit, but then she just sends me off with a simple, you know what, you're a rock star, stop it, right? She's that person for me. Tasha is the sounding board I need who can help me analyze what's really happening. Is the evidence true, right? Um, are you know our students failing my classes? I'm like, are they not having ahas? Are my coaching clients not seeing success? Like, really helping me with some of the other tools I'm going to share. But just to really look at the evidence and look at myself in a little bit different way. And guys, at the end of the day, I am so thankful for the culture we have at Emerge because not only do we celebrate the heckity toot out of wins and impacts with our students, but we also have this amazing culture where it's safe to say, hey, I'm struggling. I'm not feeling right. And someone will step in to help you. So if you guys, if you have a team how are you creating that culture of resilience so that your people are able to come back from those tough times because we all have them? And are you someone that someone can go to when they're feeling crazy or lost? The second thing that I recommend is just look at the facts. So back to that evidence at hand, right? Did it make sense that I was feeling this way? What kind of feedback were I, was I actually getting from my clients? And when I paused to just ask myself those questions, I was able to see that it didn't make much sense that I felt the way I felt because my clients were telling me otherwise. My students were having light bulb moments and ahas. Um, so what I recommend, guys, is just don't ignore the actual goodness in front of you um, and seek out that feedback, right? If that's where you, what you need as evidence and facts to help get your head straight. Listen to what they're truly saying. Another thing about facts is just I took a real hard look at my schedule. I know that I'm someone who needs some time mentally to prepare for a call. And I need some time, some time after a call to actually kind of debrief and think through and process my thoughts for a few minutes. But when I looked at my schedule that week, I was feeling so crazy. I was back to back to back and I wasn't serving myself. And I certainly was not serving my clients and my students in the best way possible. So I made a simple adjustment in the next week, gave myself a nice 15 or 20 minute buffer between calls, um, and I just felt more balanced. So just look at the facts and what's really happening at the big picture level. Thirdly, manage your expectations. Who here feels that they have to light the world on fire 
with every single coaching call or every interaction they have with a customer, right? More importantly, do you feel like you have to show up with, you know, as their savior or their superhero? Or do you really just need to be there consistently and provide a safe place for them to learn and grow? I would argue it's the latter. But I, like some of you found my, probably have, I found myself getting off calls, expecting more of myself than my clients and my students even really needed. They were learning and growing, but I was missing those little moments because I was looking for the monumental shifts. And so one example I have of this too is in my recent Leadership Foundation group, I had a student who jumped out and tried and had a first time coaching call with one of her builders. And she shared with us that after the call, she just felt like it was so clunky. She didn't feel like she added any value. She was just really, really not feeling great. But shortly after that, her builder texted her and just could went on and on about how grateful she was for the time and how um, supported she felt and how excited she was to start coaching regular coaching calls with her so don't ever doubt yourself know that being there for someone is sometimes all they really need the last thing i would recommend is to just shift your focus by this i mean is i was on the crazy train every morning i was just hopping right on the train without my coffee or anything and i was just feeling the self-doubt that 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 thing was was pumping out right i needed to find a way to not get on that train get off of it not start my day in that way and i had to find a way to just kind of get on that out of that inner focus i was having and and, put, and think outer focus if that makes sense so what i did is i made a shift and instead of getting my breakfast and hopping on Facebook and Instagram and seeing all the things, all the wonderful things in the world that everybody was doing, which causes me some natural self-doubt. Instead, I leave my laptop closed, I'm having my breakfast and I get a card out and I write a card of encouragement to someone else. And I, guys, I can tell you that ritual now of just walking that card to the mailbox has helped really reset my brain truly i'm beginning the day feeling stronger and more ready to impact the lives of others i truly have fallen back in belief with myself so i would encourage you to just find a way to reset change a small little thing in your day if you're finding yourself just getting on that same train every single day Guys, thank you so much for allowing me the opportunity to share kind of a tough time with you. And it, the hope is, is that you found something beneficial that you, you know, this was normal, hopefully, and you felt this way before too, and that you can use one of these tools when you are feeling that self-doubt, that you can fall back in belief with yourself. Um, thank you so much for your time and for joining us. Um, and if you would like to sign up for one of our free trainings on closing, recruiting, or leadership, please go to EmergeSalesTraining.com backslash free training.